I started doing this stuff, rounding flies and stuff like that in the uh, in the early 80s when I really got into fly tying. When, when we got rid of fly fishing, uh, um, oh, there's place people like Roger Hay Brown and Tommy Brayshaw. Uh, Brayshaw, I, I tied a, up a set of his fly patterns, and uh, it was one of the first framings that I'd, I've done. Okay, and it actually sits on the on the wall over in there in the corner. Okay, and that was. Uh, well, almost 40 years ago, I did that one. Um, I've been doing this stuff for a long, long, long time. Most most of these things that you see around here, I've uh, I've done most of this work myself. I got a little Mac cutter in there, and uh, but doing these kind of things, you know, they're, they're going to be around. Uh, yes, <laughs> some of these are memories too of you know fishing with my son. Uh, when he's about 20, okay, he uh, wanted to catch a coho on the fly, so I, I was up in the Haida Gwaii there, and he uh, he says, well, I'll come up, okay, uh, just before university starts, and uh, he walked, walked to the Talal River and put a fly on the end of his line. He walked down there and, and threw it in, basically caught a coho right away, okay. <laughs> and there was this, this German tourist that came up. Uh, he'd been fishing for five days and hadn't had a fish in five days. And he says, oh, how did you do that? And Charles says, well, you have to go talk to my dad about this, but uh, we used a little bit different technique because all those other guys were using sink tips and big flies. And, you know, I put that little uh, polar bear bucktail on, okay, and uh, and a floating line, and uh, you know that sometimes works a lot better than uh, doing the sink tip stuff. So <laughs> anyway, it was it was a neat story, okay. And uh, golden pheasant tippet strands. You gotta get it to lie down properly. It's one of these classic uh, Atlantic salmon flies that's uh, tied by a Scottish fly tire, James Wright, in Sproston uh, in Scotland, or I think it's probably the River Dee, but uh, it was about 1850 when he introduced it to uh, the Atlantic salmon of Britain, but it became a, a really successful salmon fly, okay, and it ended up coming into Canada. Then when it came to British Columbia, probably around the turn of the last century uh, and the government publication that listed the first first bunch of flies around 1912 uh, it was the Jock Scott Silver Doctor and a few other Atlantic salmon patterns that uh, that uh, were popular but it's a complicated fly to tie as you can see there's all kinds of stuff that got to go into these these things and getting materials back then and it was difficult and uh, so people started to uh, uh, use lesser materials to simplify the pattern and but then there's busted floor combustor, peacock wing, uh, uh, light turkey uh, quill, okay, so I became interested in fly fishing in, back in the 60s and then started, well I was a steelhead fisher and then I've switched from steelhead float fishing to fly fishing in 1979 on the Thompson River. So uh, it's been a real pleasant pastime, a uh, hobby, uh, and uh, you know, I like the history of the sport. And then I started writing uh, sometime in the mid 80s probably, and then thought I would like to write some books. Uh, did a small publication privately done through the totems on Roderick Haig Brown uh, uh, 10 years after he died, okay, and we presented a book to Mrs. Haig Brown and did a few private printed copies for members of the totems and then sent it around to uh, publishers and uh, Frank Amato published it in 1993. The book's called Fly Pattern to Roderick Haig Brown. And since then, I've uh, just completed uh, the 16th book, okay? So I was born in Vancouver, 1943, January 5th. I live four blocks away from where I grew up. There's not too many people could say they lived their whole life in Vancouver, but that's me, so. Broody got into fly tying, you know, it was something I, I you know, I really like the history of the sport. I'm, I'm recording history, okay? I'm putting things down that are, could be lost, and uh, by doing it, I'm, I'm making a, a contribution. Uh, you know, when future generations 
can look at this stuff and they can realize, you know, that we probably have seen the, the best, okay, uh, uh, that British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest can offer in the way of fishing opportunities. Losing fish is part of the game, but this time it was exciting while it lasted. It would have been nice to have seen the size of the fish, but other than the swoosh that I heard and the displacement of water on the take that I saw, which indicated to me a large fish, he never showed himself. This trip was a pleasant one. My companions were excellent, and we all got along very well. The weather was superb with only two days of rain. Those steel are some of the best, best fighting ones in the in the steelhead world. Okay, uh, they're heart stoppers, what we used to call them. Sad, sad, sad situation. So there's a lot in fly fishing that uh, uh, it's not just going out and catching fish with a fly. Okay, uh, you know, like Grantham here, he builds bamboo rods. Okay, and that's a craft that. Uh, was dying. Uh, there's there's a, an aesthetic quality to using them, uh, and it's not for everybody because they're really expensive things to do. Okay, uh, I got into more of the I think the writing and recording of history and time flies and stuff like that. So, and of course fishing a lot. Still like to do that. But my latest book is this feathers and brushes that I did with Diane Michelin and uh, from Parksville. There, she's an artist uh, that paints uh, fly fishing. Uh, scenes, flies, and different things related to fly fishing. Uh, it has a limited edition card inside the book and then slip case and cover. When it sits on your library shelf there, it's uh, a little bit nicer than having a soft cover book. So, and of course the, the Harry Lemire, uh, yeah, well, he's uh, probably in the past 50 or 60 years, he's been one of the most influential steelhead fly fishers, okay, and a real super fisherman, okay, and he, <laughs> because he catches a lot of fish, he influences different people, uh, but it was his uh, tying of, of these complex salmon flies that are the thing that really highlighted his skills, okay, because he does this without a vise, okay, he, it was all in hand, hand tying, okay, without the vise, so that's what, he, what that's the way he wanted to do it, and that's the way he started, and uh, he just became really skilled at doing it, so, uh, you know, like this thing here has got nearly 20 pieces of materials in it, the Silver Doctor, well, uh, you got to prepare all this stuff. Uh, it, can, it can take an hour for, you know, somebody reasonably skilled to put that thing together, okay? Uh, um, and to do it without a vice, it, uh, it, it takes even longer, so. It's just because they're collector's items, I, I only do 20 of these things, okay? And uh, yeah, it's fun doing it. It takes a lot of fiddly little work uh, putting these things together and uh, takes time to do it properly so having something like that on the cover of the book and then having it there it just makes it really something special to have. The Harry Lemire book is really a nice piece of work. Uh, you know this particular one is uh, a special book for Bill Fokage. He tied these 10 different flies that are featured in the book and again I really like this little mounted thing to protect the actual fly from being crushed by the book. Fly tying materials and the flies, uh, that's another one I do like too. Okay, it's got the Silver Doctors that have been in use in Canada and that's a fly that was owned by Roderick Haig Brown. Bill likes the history so I try and include uh, as much of it in this, these, the, this, this particular text as I could. Uh, Haig Brown steel head be nice black polymer, okay. And that's the uh, steelhead silver doctor. So. Each one of these cards, too, I like to put a picture of the fly that isn't complementary to the uh, to the books. Uh, I sew the, the 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 flies onto the card. You know, it's got to fit into here, and sometimes I have to trim them a little bit, and on my machine there. And then. Uh, in the book, there's uh, what I call limited edition cards that uh, ex explain the, uh, a little bit about the book. This particular fly is, is one of the flies that is actually in the book, okay? Uh, so uh, uh, that, that is my, my fly, and there's a story in there on how I got that from Harry. And so anyway. Uh, you got to make sure it gets to the right place because some of these have got to be mailed to places in the United States and uh, elsewhere. So uh, there's 
two that I make, one that goes into the book and one that goes into the clamshell box. Good judgment, okay, that I can usually put them in and they, they look all right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's that one is done. So uh, the blue wasp is the one I thought I would do, and this is to get a little bit of judgment call too to make sure it looks like it's going to be in the in the right place and uh, poke a hole through it. And I oh, was just making a comment there well, a couple of days ago to my friend Bill McMillan, who I'm doing the next book on, uh, about all the fiddling that you need to do okay, to get one of these things ready, because it's uh, picky work. Okay? Uh, you know, again, getting a template for the cards and getting the printing done and then doing this sewing uh, on. For me, it's uh, you know, doing things with your hands, okay? Uh, the fly tying stuff, okay, there's kind of, there's a visual thing too, okay? When you tie a nice fly and uh, proportions are right and uh, uh, you know you're going to catch fish with it, uh, uh, but it, it's just a, a, a feeling of well-being, okay, that you'll be able to create something with your hands. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's, some, some flies you, you can uh, are, are really simple to tie, okay, but you, even a small dry fly, there's proportions to it, and if you tie it really, really well and the proportions are right, okay, and it looks really good, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, it's a, a, a skilled craft to do it, but it also becomes a, a, an art form too, okay, when it's really well done. And uh, again, the, the biggest example of these is the classic old Atlantic salmon flies. You know, when uh, this is the ultimate craft form probably in, in fly fishing, just be able to tie one of these things, you know, with uh, skill and proportions, okay, and there's there's books that are written about, uh, you know, what the proper proportions, where you start to put your materials in, and uh, oh, the number of ribs that need to go on uh, on the fly as you, as you complete it, okay. Uh book that best describes it is uh, T. E. Price Tenants, How to Dress Salmon Flies. It's one of the one of the best books I think ever written for fly tires, uh, especially people that want to tie the classic Atlantic salmon flies. Uh, uh, Price Tenant has a way with words and the, the descriptions are there, but also uh, there's lots of good pen and ink illustrations on, on the different steps of tying flies. So uh, it's been my Bible for 30 years uh, on tying uh, classic Atlantic salmon flies. So, you know, each one of those little strips has to be attached to one another, okay? So it's, it's just kind of a complicated process. <laughs> There's Charlie Brumwell. There he is right here. <laughs> just talking about you, Charlie. <laughs> oh, again? <laughs> what did I do this time? <laughs> well, we're talking about Heidi Gly and all that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. This is Corby, okay? This is Alicia. <laughs> She's the boss of the library out there. The Woodward Library. Yeah, the Woodward Library. Okay. This is Sally Taylor. <laughs> okay. Let's start with uh, the this. Well, here's your, your guys'. Uh, these are the UBC ones, okay? So uh, yeah. they turned out pretty good. You know, he he, used to, he he did these things and he donated them to places and people bought them, okay? Right. So Harry signed it too, okay? So it makes your 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 yeah. the book a little bit more special. My mom the one of the cards and stuff yeah. like that. And you know, Gwen Kushner and Campbell River does it's all the uh, special stuff. And Beautiful. of course, this has got uh, a, a similar card except with the picture of the fly yeah. in it because of uh, so. Yeah. You know why? Why I'd be interested in having a, a book that was written 600 years ago? Okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it's part of the history of the sport, and that's where my interest was. Was you know a record of uh, the written word of uh, who did what and and when and uh, how how it kind of evolved. Okay. You know, some people uh, want to get Wayne Gretzky's uh, autograph, but uh, I want the Wayne Gretzky of BC Fly Fishing. All that. <laughs> yeah, let's pick the first one I ever did, okay? This fly pattern is Roger Hig Brown, 1993. Oh, you guys don't have a limited edition of that one, I guess, eh? And there's the paperwork for all these, these three, all right. so I think I got everything okay, in there that we need. You got your signature, that's the yeah. most important yeah. part. Yeah. Fantastic art. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Bill McMillan limited edition, okay, with the Winter's Hope fly. Signature cards in the back there, okay.
Yeah. Well, again, this is another one of her hundred yeah, steelhead streams. Yeah. And, you know, this craft is, is really dying out, uh, the, the book binding stuff. She did yeah. this? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 and... Uh, Look at that. Yeah, oh no, she does a good, uh, you never could tell with, with Gwen what she's going to end up doing for her, for me, okay? Because I yeah. just leave it up to her to yeah. do the, her design there. Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. she often comes up with unique little things, so. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah, actually, one of my acquaintances, uh, when I put the one I tied just recently for the McMillan book on my Facebook page there one of my silver-haired doctor friends said uh, made a comment about uh, it's a favorite fly because he's a silver-haired doctor okay and he is a silver-haired doctor so I had dinner with him on Saturday night and I gave that fly I tied to a friend of mine and I says George because of that comment as a silver-haired doctor, I'm going to be tying this fly for Corby and he's just say, I'll give it to you, okay? So <laughs> this is going to the silver-haired doctor, so <laughs> as a gift, you mm know, -hmm. so, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> you got your silver doctor. I got it. Yeah. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Dean River, 1983. This was a nine-day trip in late August. My companions during that this time were Peter Brumall, Harold Baker, and John Taylor. The fishing was slow. In our nine days we stayed, we hooked close to two dozen fish, landing 14. We had some very small fish, three and a half pounds to six pounds, some eight to 12 pounds, and one large fish of 18 pounds caught by Harold Baker. I only beat three out of nine hooked and pulled the fly from the mouth of two others. I've lost one fly line uh, with a fish on the on the end, which Jerry Wendell, seeing the line floating down river, grabbed it. He got the fly line and the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is a, a neat little reel again. It used to be belong to my 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 chum that died in 2006. Uh, but you know, I really like this reel. So got a good click on it, uh, you know, it's almost 100 years old, so. First one I bought was a St. John because Haig Brown and uh, the Western Angler says it's a real good reel for, for steelhead. So I've had many St. John's over the years. I've lost a few of them, okay. Uh, and of course the Royal St. John was uh, a reel that was designed by Hardy for fly fishermen that wanted to fish in, in salt water, uh, beach fishing for coal and cutthroat and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't corrode, okay. And this was back in the late 1920s that they did designed the, this reel. Um, again, uh, another connection to BC fly fishing history because uh, there's not wasn't that many of them made and uh, uh, nice reel to use and I use it for up at Haida Gwaii when I go there and uh, for to fish for coho salmon. I think I might have got this one at, uh, again, British Columbia Federation of Fly Fishers. Uh, so uh, that, another way of supporting uh, these organizations is going to the fundraisers and buying stuff, okay, and not buying at cheap, paying reasonable prices for uh, these things when they go up for auction. So, uh, And, you know, again, there's an, an, uh, this is another uh, I, I really like this one because, again, the, yesterday on the trip to Campbell River, Dan, Dan Holder from Port Alberni Medicine, Qualicum Beach, and, you know, he came up with us and we had lunch together, but Dan makes these these reels, okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah, really nice little little tool, okay, for trout fishing, uh, so, again, having a special clack connection to a friend that uh, that makes these things, and when you're, you know, catching fish, uh, using it and uh, on a Ron Grantham bamboo rod or Bob Clay or Peter McVeigh bamboo rods. Uh, uh, yeah, again, it's a, a, a better feeling for me, okay, that I, I connect to the guy that made the reel, the guy that makes the rod, and of course I probably tied the fly that was on the end of the line, so.